ancient Egyptians were certainly one of the most advanced civilizations to ever walk on this planet. We marvel at their accomplishments in architecture and artwork and are left speechless by them. But the truth is, they still did some pretty crazy stuff. From strange forms of bug repellent to cat worship that maybe went a little bit too far, here are 13 most crazy things the ancient Egyptians did. Number 13. Symbolic Beards In today's society, people might get hair replacement surgery or even wear wigs to cover up the fact that they're bald. But in ancient Egyptian society, a ceremonial beard was worn by whoever was pharaoh, even if the ruler was a woman. Queen Hatshepsut revolutionized architecture in Egypt by constructing this unbelievable funerary temple. She's the second confirmed female pharaoh and came into power when her father, the I, was unable to bear a son. She often has portrayed herself as a man and wore the ceremonial beard. Pharaohs certainly had a lot of fancy items to wear, but the fake beard was one of the most important. In fact, they would even shave their beard and then put on a fake one. The main reason for this was to show allegiance to Osiris who's never caught without his trademark chin hair. Still a strange thing they did nonetheless. Number 12. Bug Repellent Bugs are certainly a nuisance in some parts of the world, and little flies can definitely drive some people crazy. The ancient Egyptian pharaoh Pepi II had his own little method of keeping the flies off of him. In order to keep the pest away, he would have several slaves smother themselves in honey near him in order for the flies to bother them and not him. Pepi II gained power at a young age, and the power most likely got to his head pretty quickly. This probably could have worked just fine if he decided to smother honey on inanimate objects around him instead of on people. A Handy Collection Archaeologists digging at an ancient palace in the city of Avaris came across a creepy discovery when they found 16 severed hands sliced at the arm. This was later proved that ancient Egyptians were paid for cutting off the right hands of enemies during battle. A hand was exchanged for gold by the pharaoh. This was believed to immobilize the enemy in the afterlife, depriving them of power for eternity. This is the early physical evidence of this practice, and it dates back to over 3,600 years. Some of the hands were even found in what's thought to be the throne room, meaning that pharaohs kept them handy, you could say. Historians are uncertain exactly where this tradition originated from. Number 10. Passing Down the Genes the pharaohs were like gods on earth and had full control of the empire. Massive monuments were built in their honor and in some cases had hundreds of wives in order to spread their bloodline as much as possible. And it actually worked. There's nothing strange about having kids, but some of the pharaohs had so many that it's still relevant in modern times. Ramses the Great was said to have 100 children and there's actually a very good chance you might have some genetics from an Egyptian pharaoh. Some sources claim that King Tut's genes are found in half of European men, but this theory is somewhat controversial. Number 9. Dream Importance We've all probably had a few crazy dreams before in our life and just brushed it off like it wasn't a big deal. But in ancient Egyptian times, your dream had serious mystical importance and every part about it had some kind of meaning. People would actually hire a priest after a dream in some occasions to help them comprehend what was going on in their heads. Some priests would even have extensive dream comprehension training. Bizarre things such as seeing a large cat in your dreams would mean something such as a bountiful harvest in the years to come. If you saw the face of a leopard in your dream, it meant that you would soon be a powerful individual of a community. Some might arrange to sleep at a temple in order to receive a message from the gods directly while they were sleeping. Do you ever feel like your dreams might be able to answer some unknown questions? Number 8. Fighting Off Zombies so is it still unclear if the zombie apocalypse is capable of happening? Well, just ask the ancient Egyptians if this is all a hoax. A well-respected archaeology website posted an article titled Zombie Attack on Hierakonopolis. There appeared to be an outbreak of Solanum, which is commonly referred to in the Zombie Survival Guide. Once this infects the brain, it wipes the brain of all personality, mercy, individuality, and makes people want to bite each other. Due to the wound marks found on many skeletons in the city, it would suggest that it was no ordinary confrontation and in addition, many tombs were found with scratch marks coming from the inside. Other mummies were found with no head and this was likely done to be completely sure that the zombie was done for. Evidence would suggest that it was roughly 4% of the population of the city that was running around like a bunch of ravenous zombies. 
they were able to find some skulls of the zombies and determine that the virus was indeed there, and hopefully, they wouldn't spread the virus again. Number 7. Early Cosmetics the Egyptians were definitely known to be pretty stylish, and both men and women wore heavy amounts of makeup. They mostly did this in order to celebrate gods such as Horus and Ra, and by doing this, this will give them protection. These cosmetics were made by grinding down metallic ore such as malachite and galena. They would then apply it underneath their eyes with tools made of wood or ivory. Women would also use henna in order to add more color to their cheeks or even to their fingernails. It wasn't just makeup the ancient Egyptians used either. There's evidence to suggest that they also used perfume. Both men and women wore perfumes made of things such as olive oil and cinnamon. Some of these cosmetics that were applied to the face could also contain some toxic materials such as lead. However, it's believed that this could actually cure some infections. Some studies indicate that the lead-based makeup actually did work temporarily enough to keep them from getting eye infections. Number 6. Hidden Rooms in Burial Chambers Is it possible Howard Carter missed something during his first excavation? Modern technology is making it much easier for us to make new discoveries and learn even more about this fascinating culture. No one has seen behind this wall for at least 3,339 years, but that could soon be over. Radar scans around the room have revealed both metallic and organic materials in secret hidden chambers. What else could we possibly find here? It really could be the next big thing. In April 2016, a group of specialists performed additional radar scans, and they are about 90% certain additional chambers exist. But is it worth another curse of the pharaohs to go and find out? Number 5. Head Shaving in ancient Egypt, it was quite common for everyone to keep their heads completely shaved for hygienic reasons. We might find this to be a little bit bizarre in modern times, but it was the norm during this period, and also, both males and females had no problem with it. Head lice was a common problem, and in order to get rid of head lice, the hair was just razored off. Lice remedies proved to be ineffective, and this was before the time of shampoo. Number 4. Cat Crazed as we all know, in modern times, pretty much everyone out there with the internet is obsessed with cats. In ancient Egypt, these were the most sacred animals who have their own religious cult going for them. When someone lost their pet cat in these times, they would shave off their own eyebrows in mourning. Seems a little bit drastic. If someone was accused of killing a cat, they would be given the capital punishment and sometimes be thrown into a pit of snakes. The Persians even released cats onto the battlefield, knowing that the Egyptians would rather surrender than to put the cats in danger. It wasn't just humans who were mummified either. Apparently, someone fell into a tunnel of thousands of mummified cats, as if cats weren't already creepy enough. Number 3. They Never Rode Camels in modern times, it seems as though the only proper way to tour the pyramids is by camel. But guess what? The ancient Egyptians never even rode camels, and in fact, the ancient Egyptians never even had a word for the word camel. Domesticated camels were far away from the powerful pharaohs in places such as Assyria and were only brought to Egypt by foreign invading armies. The first historical reference to there even being a camel in Egypt came between the 7th and 6th century BC from Persian and Assyrian invaders. Camels were eventually used here more frequently for trade, which helped them not depend on the Nile River quite so much. Number 2. More Pyramids Than You Even Realize The largest and oldest of any pyramid in the world, the Great Pyramid of Egypt, is the only standing ancient wonder of the world and is remarkably still in good condition. Not only is this the most well-known pyramid in Egypt, but it was also built during the Old Kingdom by Pharaoh Khufu, and this was well before Egypt's Golden Age. There's also a bunch of pyramids at the Dashur Necropolis, which includes the Bent Pyramid, which was built 2600 BC by Pharaoh Sneferu, and it's basically an architectural blunder. The pyramid begins to incline at a 54 degree angle, but engineers quickly realized that this angle was much too steep, and it wouldn't work. So about halfway through, they decided to give it a 43 degree angle, which explains its bent aspect. Once the pharaohs realized that the pyramids were getting relentlessly looted, they decided to build the Valley of the Kings. And number one, meteorite daggers. 
One of the most remarkable artifacts that was discovered in King Tut's tomb was the meteorite dagger. A new study of King Tut's knives proves that the iron in which it was made from is not metal from this planet and came from a fall meteorite. In this photo, you can see the one and only meteorite dagger of King Tut. The iron blade was found wrapped around his right thigh, so that means it must have been pretty precious to him. The only other dagger found on him was made of gold. What leads archaeologists to believe that this is a dagger from outer space is that the iron was an extremely rare substance to come across during the Bronze Age. Researchers at the Polytechnic University in Milan in 1970s had inconclusive results originally, but taking advantage of new technology, they decided to test out this theory again. The blade closely matched elements found in meteorites, containing mostly iron, but cobalt and nickel as well. What else could this crazy civilization be capable of?